Uh, good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the October 25th, uh, 2021 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting to order. Uh, this open meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. This meeting is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So we will, uh, begin by taking a roll call to confirm that all members of the board are present and can hear me, starting with uh, Ken Lau. Yes, I'm here. Jean Benson. Present. Steve Revelak. Good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, Melissa Tintakoulis, I believe is not able to join us this evening. And I am Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. And I believe that we have uh, two members of the Department of Planning and Community Development with us, uh, Director Jennifer Raitt. Here. And uh, Kelly Linema. Here. Great, do we have any member, other members of the department joining us this evening? We do not. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So with that, we will uh, move to the first item on our agenda, which is the uh, public hearings. And the first item is the continued public hearing for docket number 3665 for 645 Massachusetts Avenue. And I understand that the applicant has requested that their application be withdrawn without prejudice. Um, Jenny, do you have anything else that you would like to add uh, before we take a motion to, um, for the board to withdraw their, uh, to accept their withdrawn application? I do not have anything to add, Rachel. Okay. Um, and the uh, request for the application uh, to be withdrawn without prejudice is also found in the packet. I can bring it up if needed. Great, why don't I go through um, the board and see if there are any questions as to um, the withdrawal. And I'll start with Jean. Yes, I'd like uh, Attorney Anessi to um, discuss why he's withdrawing it instead of continuing to put in, continuing and then put in an alternative proposal. Great, um, I'll actually take all questions from the board, um, Mr. Anessi, before I turn to you, if that's okay. Uh, Ken, do you have any questions for Attorney Anessi? My question is very similar to Jean's. Um, I just wanna see if they're planning to resubmit a, a different plan or are they withdrawing, period? Okay, great. And then Steve, I know that you were not here for the um, original application. So I'm um, actually just going to take questions from Kin and, and Jean, if that's okay with you. Fabulous. Okay, uh, Mr. Nessie, if you could respond to those two questions. Uh, no, we are, we are in fact going to resubmit. We are not going to uh, ride off into the sunset. I have just been engaged uh, and quite frankly, when I came in on an ARB case, I want to come in at ground level and I want to be in at the outset so that I can be involved at every stage. I have been talking with uh, the uh, Chase team, uh, the architect, as well as the uh, Chase members as well. Uh, I've been talking with the landowner, uh, the individual who owns the property as well. And our intent is to refile uh, once uh, we uh, uh, have a further, dis uh, further discussions about the plan that we want to submit. Uh, I have gone through uh, all of the considerations that have to be looked at by the members of the ARB uh, with respect to acting on uh, the application uh, under environmental design review. Uh, and I'm just not sure it's something that had been done before, but I have done it with them. And for that reason, uh, I have suggested to them 
that we withdraw without prejudice and simply refile. Thank you. I'll go back to Jean. Did you have any further questions? Um, I, I don't, but if I might say, I'm not happy with approving the withdrawal without prejudice because I think it just basically slows down the process if they were to file um, for another location or for something that's not like what they filed before at the same location, um, that would be different. But I can't see approving this just so Mr. Anessi, Attorney Anessi can start from scratch because he's very savvy and he doesn't need to do that. They can just file again. So I would um, support something that um, allows a withdrawal with prejudice that they couldn't file for two years uh, for a similar project at the same site, or I wouldn't vote to allow them to withdraw. Jean, so that I understand your request, are you looking for a substantively, substantively different proposal at the same site or a different site? Are the two? No, we're talking about the same site, uh, but I need to look at it anew, okay? Again, I was not involved from day one. So I want to look at it freshly with fresh eyes and uh, reapply. So uh, the question is, will it be a substantively different proposal than what it, we have in front of us today? It may be, okay. I, I don't know that yet. I'm still in the talking stages with the client at this point. Uh, so until I have those discussions, I won't be able to tell you definitively what it's going to look like. Uh, but uh, again, I've done this many times before and there's never been an objection uh, to a withdrawal without prejudice. So quite frankly, I'm surprised that there is at this point. Uh, Kim, any further questions or comments? Uh, yeah, I do have one question. Uh, since she's withdrawing uh, and reapplying, does that uh, then allow Steve to get into uh, the voting mix? Jenny? Yes, uh, Steve would then be able to vote. Okay. I have no other questions. Great. Um, let's see. So, Jenny, I'm just going to confirm on process here. So, Melissa is not here, who was our fourth when we were um, initially hearing this. Um, I would assume that we need a um, majority, which would be three, to accept this withdrawal without prejudice. I just want to make sure that um, I'm correct in that assumption. I would say that you are correct in that assumption. I think what you could do is you could continue it to next Monday night, um, November 1st, and uh, wait anew for um, Melissa to be able to join the meeting. She won't be here this evening, so we can't postpone something. Alternatively, the applicant is allowed to withdraw their application. I mean, they, they are allowed to do that. So if they are withdrawing, we can accept their withdrawn application. It is not a repetitive petition in any way because we haven't made a decision on the application. So if they withdraw, they withdraw. Um, you can decide to, to accept the withdrawal and just make it clear that it is not without prejudice, perhaps. I, I guess this is maybe the, the part that uh, Gene is commenting on, but I'll allow Gene to speak for himself. But I think that, that that is another pathway for this evening. Alternatively, you could continue it to next Monday night and wait for the four of you to be able to deliberate together. Great. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Jean, your thoughts on uh, withdrawal versus withdrawal without prejudice? I mean, that obviously, if they can withdraw without our voting on it, they have a right to do that. If we're going to vote on it, I would want it to be with prejudice that they can't put in a similar uh, proposal for a bank at the same location for a couple of years. Under those circumstances, uh, uh, Rachel, 
I'd be requesting that the matter be continued until November 1st. Great, thank you. Um, any questions from the board, Jean or Ken, on continuing the, um, the request for withdrawal without prejudice until November 1st? I'm fine with that. Okay. Great. Is there a motion to continue uh, the request for withdrawal without prejudice for docket number 3665 to November 1st? So moved. Second. I'll go ahead and second that. Um, let's see. Let's take a vote. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Uh, so we will. Uh, See you again on November 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we'll move now to um, public hearing or docket number 3673, which is the continued public hearing for 455 to 457 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, this For this docket, we have uh, revised materials which have been submitted for this meeting and uh, the applicant will be provided up to 15 minutes for an update on the materials. Uh, Attorney Anessi, will you be uh, speaking for, for this hearing and who all do you have with you tonight? Yes, we have the entire team with us uh, this evening. Uh, John Murphy, we have the architect, we have the civil engineer as well. And it was our intent, we had submitted we had responded, I think, hopefully, to uh, most of the questions posed at the last hearing uh, by the uh, members of the board. And we did that uh, in writing, we submitted that, and uh, Jenny ought to be able to pull that up uh, uh, if, uh, if she could, so that we have those responses for uh, the board members. Uh, uh, we have the, uh, we have John Murphy here as well. We have the architect who's prepared to uh, speak to uh, any of the architectural issues that have been changed as far as the, uh, the plans are concerned. But if you start with the uh, layout, okay, some of the questions that were as follows. Revisit the layout of different uh, sections of the plan. And uh, we have indicated that uh, the plan A5 will remain a shared light one bed unit due to its location. A12, had, ha, A12 has been reconfigured to push the living area to the corner. A11 has been altered slightly as a consequence. Now that was in response, I believe, to some comments that were made by Ken, but Ken may have other comments on that uh, uh, as well. Uh, uh, do you want to address th that at this point, Ken, or shall I just go on with the uh, other responses? Uh, you tell me. Why don't you keep on going? I'm fine. All right. Please, uh, thanks. We uh, were asked to revisit the location of the windows on the alley units, the offset windows. And we've responded that all windows in the new structure over the parking have been reconsidered to avoid undesirable alignment. Uh, I wonder if there are any comments uh, about that response from any members of the board. I think what I'd like to do is just run through what the um, what the responses are, and then we yeah, will right. take that's any fine. comments if that's if that's do. okay. And I think you know again, if there are any, some of these are pretty clear as you've identified here, and some of them you've identified um, require further study or are in progress. So perhaps if you could spend a little more time on those, that would be helpful. Right. Thank you. Uh, would you like me to read each of the responses, Rachel? No, no I think we, we all have them. Um, I yeah. think if there's any, yeah. any additional detail that's not reflected in here that you think would be pertinent, that would be very helpful. Bob, right. I'll, Bob I'll jump in real quick. This is jump John. In. Yeah. yeah, so we, we um, and just to summarize, I think we worked with the planning department. We covered almost, I would say, 98, 99% of the questions. I think some of the biggest 
questions came with signage, which we did provide at the end of our package, what we kind of consider our general template. And as of course, as signed bylaws change and grow, obviously we comply with that. We updated renderings to the rear of the property, which I'm sure is gonna be something people would like to jump to. So maybe go there. I mean, I, everyone here is, I'm guessing, seeing all these comments. So I think maybe just turning it back over to the members of the board, potentially starting with the rear of the building and some of the bigger design related questions might be the most efficient way to go about this. And if other things come up, you know, some of these are black and white answers. So I don't think we need to go through all of them, but maybe it makes most sense to turn it back over to, to the board. Great, thank you, I appreciate it. And I appreciate the thorough response as well. This was very helpful, um, at least for myself as I was reviewing this. So thank you for um, submitting it in, in this format and for working so closely with the department. Um, I'll turn it over to Jean first for any questions that, that you might have regarding the uh, revised plans and response. Yeah, thank you. This was very helpful. Um, all the responses are very helpful. I do have a, a number of questions. Let me start with the trees. So if you can pull up, Jenny, the um, new schematic they put in, and there's one that shows uh, a rendering of the back of the building that also shows the alleyway. Next, next one, I think. Yes, thank you. Um, so I, you know, I, I appreciate that uh, staff and uh, the applicant went out and looked and saw that uh, um, they can't fit trees in. But if you look at this here, this is not the alleyway, but it's another area. And I just wondered if this was the area where you determined that trees would not work, or was the area the very narrow um, alleyway between, because I was thinking of this area for some trees. Plus, if you notice right next to the sidewalk, there's a planting strip where it looked like there could be a tree or two. So I just wondered um, if you could address that. Sure, um, I'm gonna let Aaron jump in because the Allen and Major has a landscape architect and they worked through this. I will say to answer your first part question, yes, this is the area okay. that we were talking about. Um, we did look at it, but Aaron, do you want to jump in and explain why we kept it as is? Sure, yeah. We, we kept the Abravite row um, because it's, it's more for the, for the pedestrians that would be walking through there and the tenants. We felt it would be uh, a, a better screening wall. Um, now, I, I did reach out to our landscape architect um, and she provided a couple options. So a couple different options for trees there would be, she said you could do honey locust trees at 20 foot spacing. There would be about three trees on that strip. So you wouldn't have much screening if we went that route. And also another option would be you could add a fagistate variety like green polar oak. Um, and that would be slightly more screening because you can put those at 10 foot spacing. Now with the spacing requirement, she's saying, I, I just don't think we'd have much uh, of a buffer provided for the tenants. So that's why we kept it as is of course, we're flexible to what the board would, would like to see there, but uh, that was just um, why we kept it. Okay, well, that's a good, helpful explanation. So you have the line there that has the Arbor Vitis, but how about the area right by the sidewalk? Not if, yeah, sort of um, next to, yeah, sort of, and on the other side of the driveway entrance, that too. Couldn't you put a tree or two over there where you don't really need the arborvitae for screening. And it looks to me like there's enough distance between the building and that planting strip to put in at least one and maybe two trees. Uh, potentially one. I think it's a little close to have two larger trees there side by side, but potentially we could put one at the corner, but you do see we have the bike rack there as well. Right. Um, so it might be getting tight for a larger tree. Well, 
Right, but there's the there's the walkway on one side of the bike, on the one side of the bike rack, and on the other side, there look to be two bushes of some sort. Um, and on the other side of the little walkway, if you go, yes, that's those. Can they be replaced with a tree? Potentially, yes. I I'd like to uh, again. I'd have to run that by the landscape architect because I know you need a certain amount of. Uh, width and she likes to see i think it's between three to five feet at least um okay if you, check, if you check out that out with her i would appreciate that yep i can do um, that if we can move on to the roof I think it might be. Do you have, a, do you have a plan, uh, a page number in a plan? There, there is a plan that. Uh, sheet A1. Peter, thank you. If it helps, Jenny, uh, page 91 of the package. <clears throat> thank you, Ken. It's a, I'm doing, I have to do this individually piece by piece, sorry. Thank you. Jenny, it was on Please the go, same, go ahead and talk. I, I'm sorry, it's taking it was me on a the same to sheet, large document. It was on the same sheet that we had up before. Yes. It's about I, three or four pages before that page. It's just take. It's just taking time for me to move the document. Thank you. Okay. So please feel I, free to talk. All right. So I appreciate um, that you're going to make the roof solar ready. My concern about looking at this diagram was the placement of the utilities on the roof, the air source, heat pumps, etc. Potentially wouldn't allow you to have a significant amount of um, solar on the roof. So I just wondered if we could make sure that wherever the heat pumps are located, that they'll be located in a place where you can have maybe 50% roof coverage with solar. Um, I can, is, that what, is that what you define as significant mm -hmm. use for? Mm -hmm. I can answer that can. one that one as well. These particular type of units uh, are not difficult to relocate. Uh, essentially just run an extended refrigerant line and they sit on railroad ties. So uh, if, if solar was to be added, those those could be moved around as needed. Okay, so probably when the when it, the initial construction is done, they should, you shouldn't have to move them later. They should be put in a place where you don't have to move them to install solar. So I mean, I'm fine with your explanation. So we probably, at least for me, I'd like to see that as one of the conditions. Okay. Um, one of the issues that came up last time that I don't think was addressed was the unloading area, loading dock. Is, yeah, where is that going to be on the property? Um, uh, we don't have Jenny. We, do you think you can maybe step in here since we met on site about this? Certainly, Rachel. Is that all right? Absolutely. Yep. I know that there was a description in the document. So, Jenny, if you could go through that. Absolutely. So, um, so yes, we did meet on site. This is not something that the applicant had any intention of putting on site. What we were investigating was how we could address it on the street. And we did investigate a possibility which would need much further review by the police department and then approval by the select board if anything was to be changed. Um, I think that we would probably do that in relation to the parklet because they're basically adjacent to one another. Um, but that would not be something that would be on site on, you know, as part of any parking layout. You wouldn't see, we weren't, um, we had not directed the applicant to find a loading space on their property, essentially. Okay. They don't currently have one and they don't use 
they don't load and unload in that fashion. There's also not any loading spaces on that street right now at all or behind it, so, and, uh, including while we were out there investigating, uh, there were trucks you know, backing up and going in and uh, you know, to and from various locations uh, to deliver all sorts of items. So I, I think that it's a broader, an issue that is broader than this just this particular development that we will address, but we won't be able to address um, in a way that relates to this particular application alone. Okay, that's fine. Um, my next question has to do with um, parking. I noticed that you're still working on the TDM plan, which, which is fine. Um, my concern is how the spaces are going to be allocated between the residential and um, the commercial tenants. And what's your thinking on that at the moment? Well, I thought we were directed to show in our renderings and explain how they were gonna be only de dedicated for the residential units, which I think That's in the correct. rendering of the rear, there's a there's signage right on the building. That's okay. Correct. So yep. I think if if um, I think you asked for a reduction in parking spaces to sixteen spaces, if I remember correctly, and I think also that the um, spaces required for the residential are fifteen, which means you could have one commercial space if I've added that up correctly. But I think the proposal is that um, um, you work with uh, planning community development on a TDM that they would approve, but the TDM I think would need to be for the commercial tenants. And then I would find that acceptable under those circumstances. And um, I just want, the only other thing I wondered, you, you talked about the not needing a chase where the Papaginos was because there's another long-term tenant coming in. Can you tell us what that tenant is? Um, it is a tenant from upstairs, Made Pro. Okay, yep. great, thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Ken, any questions for the applicant? Well, I'll start off with saying thank you for addressing some of those concerns I had. Uh, from the previous meeting. That's very nice. Thank you. <clears throat> um, can you go to the <clears throat> elevations or the rendering, uh, Jennifer, if you can, please? Your cornice uh, and also your trim work. Um, I would like to know what is that material and what's it made of? It's, it's just shown as a big white band right now. And I'd like to know uh, what you guys were thinking of. Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple of things. Um, one way or the other, it'll end up painted to match all the other trim. Uh, it'll either be AZAC or in some cases we've used EFIS molding. Um, so that it's something we're gonna have to coordinate with the contractor later. And also at this time, we still have not met with Historic to get their feedback. Uh, so that is, that is subject to uh, uh, their specifications. Okay, I would recommend staying away <clears throat> from PVC just because um, uh, I, I just don't like the way it looks on, on big long surfaces because they expand so much and contract so much. They leave all these little um, splinters at the joints. I think this long as you can get a 16 foot and then you know get all these little joints all over the place that, that expand and contract with the weather. Um, that's the only thing I would tell you to stay away from, okay? Um, the other material you have here shown is um, this um, batten board. Um, to be blunt, it looks like a big barn to me, okay? And uh, I, I prefer if you um, went with a different material. Um, it doesn't look like it blends in uh, with the neighborhood there at all. Um, can you guys, would you guys be interested in considering a different uh, material there? It, it, um, 
do, do you have something that you would recommend? Well, the, the stay within the area that I, was, I would probably go with some sort of cement panel and not go with a board and batten and go with maybe a, you know, aluminum reveals or something like that, go with a different pattern, but stay with, but, but still, you know, you can still stay with something similar that you have there, but don't go as, that looks like the pattern you have looks like a barn, but, but just change to a, um, a cement panel with, with reveals in it. And, and that'll give it some character and, and some, um, a little depth. Uh, uh, Rachel can get a little more into that. I think uh, she probably has some ideas to herself. Um, I looked at that alleyway there. Thank you for doing that rendering for the alleyway there. Uh, I'd like to add into the, that alleyway there then is that uh, uh, we, I want to be able to put something in this thing that can't be used for storage uh, or mechanical equipment. So like later on, we're not going to see um, mechanical units hung off the side uh, from the commercial space, like a heat pump condenser or some sort of any, any mechanical equipment on there, it has to be put up on the roof. So that alleyway there sort of looks clean. There's a rendering of, of that, Jenny, uh, if you can get to that um, on this package here. Uh, and I, I will add real quick that there, that what you're describing exists right now. It's already a part of the plan to move it. Yes, I just don't want it to come back. Yeah. I, I, I know, I know what your intent is, but this is forever. And I know uh, you're going to put something in there. It's going to look nice. I appreciate it, but I just don't want uh, put it in here part of the approval process, saying this is not going to this is not going to be turned back into an alleyway. I just don't, you know. Okay, it's approved. Um, it's not coming back, Ken. Okay, thank you, Bob. But I would you know, add for add for fire safety too. We're not going to be able to put. You can see two people right now. There's not going to be any room on the walkway for safety purposes to put anything on the ground. Nor would we want to. But no, uh, that's no, no that's, issues. I appreciate the fact that it's uh, you know it's that wide. If it, it was any wider, I can see people putting things there. Just like you know, if you ever look in the back corner of uh, shopping centers, it's just wide enough for two people to walk by, so they can't store stuff back there. And this, this is very comfortable for two people to walk. And I think it's nice. Uh, I'm assuming this walkway is very similar to the other side that you didn't show. It's made out of the exact same, are you referring to the, the ground? Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the finish and the scale yes. and the portion of the space there, that's, it's very similar. Except for yes. there's, there's no brick wall on that side. It's probably a wall of trees or uh, bushes that you show there. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same and our plan is to probably have some form of um, electric heat under there in order to deal with snow removal, which is a question that has come up before. Okay. Um, but it looks exactly the same on the other side. But, my, you know, I, I think it's my big, uh, see that cornice between the first and second floor? What's that going to be made out of? Uh, same thing, probably hardy panel in this case. Okay. Yeah, I would stay away from the plastic trim, okay? Um, the, I, I appreciate the units. I think they look a lot nicer. Um, moving the windows around and having, uh, you know, windows toward the corners and having more windows actually in elevation so it doesn't look like a blank wall. And then um, having more light there. You might be able to squeak out uh, a, a walk-in closet um, above the stairs in that one corner unit. This is not subject to approval. It's just a comment. I'm just as a courtesy saying that to you. Um, right now, when you come in that stairway in the Chinese restaurant there, that, that first hallway that you're showing is the two-story space. If you just floor over that, you should be able to get a closet up there for that unit above. Actually, I have to check the headroom on that, but that is an excellent idea. I'll make yeah. a note of it. Um, I think that, that's all I have for now, uh, Rachel. Great, thank you. Steve, any questions? Uh, just a few. Uh, Jenny, could you uh, move to sheet A901, or actually A902? I think it's just one back from where, where you were. It's the Medford Street, uh, one of the renderings that shows Medford Street.
Yeah, so the windows on the second floor, are they essentially centered over each of the commercial units? Uh, yes, that's correct. And we're showing that in the, uh, the elevation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And just, just as a general comment, um, you know, I, I noticed uh, some, I, I appreciated the attention to symmetry with the window placement, you know, on the other portions of the rear of the building. So, um, yeah, that was nice. Um, regarding the path in the alleyway, which is sheet A903, uh, the total span is 10 and a half, or the total width is 10 and a half feet wide. Is that correct? That's correct. Touch over 10 feet. Okay. And uh, how wide is the path itself? Aaron, can you answer that one? Looks like maybe six ish feet. Yeah, sure. I'm just pulling up the layout sheet. It is. Uh... Yeah, six-ish feet. You get a little bit more towards the street, but mm -hmm. along the building, it's going to be six feet. Okay. All right. Uh, just curious. Um, on the civil plans, the third sheet, uh, which details the dumpster enclosure. Yes. There's a bollard in the middle of that, and I was wondering what the purpose of that bollard was. <clears throat> that bollard's to protect. Uh, so but that, that bollard will hold the... Um, the actual metal dumpster in place and will protect from uh, when it get picked when it's picked up to destroying and pushing it into the rear of the enclosure. No, oh, so it's a it's a backstop basically. Yes. All right, and uh, finally, what um, in terms of bedroom count are the, the were these all one bedroom? Uh, no, there was. There's at least one studio. Uh, we're calling the other one in the corner of the A5 unit. We're calling that a one bedroom because it does have a bedroom with a door. Mm -hmm. uh, that bedroom doesn't have a window, so it's a shared light bedroom. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, you know, large enough by any other means that we consider it to be a one bedroom. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you, Steve. Um, I did have a couple of questions before we open this up for public comment. My first question is more of a, a comment, and I think I'll build on what Ken had started uh, speaking about with regard to the board and batten fiber cement uh, cladding at the second floor. And I think um, what Ken and I are both reacting to less than favorably there is that what it seems to be doing is not effectively um, trying to bridge between a historic structure below and potentially a more modern structure above. And I think what I would prefer to see is a decision in the cladding as to whether or not this wants to be a more modern addition on top of an historic building or um, to see more of those historic period details appear within the addition itself. So to Ken's point, um, if we are going to see something that's either you know, clapboard or um, a, um, a a panel with with reveals and, and detailing, much like you know, that's imitating an heiress craft or or some other stone material. Um, you know, I'd want to see for the windows. It looks like for the residential windows, you have a flat panel trim around each of the windows. I'd I'd want to see some sort of profile or again some sort of detailing that identifies that you are trying to. Um, keep this within the spirit of the historic nature of the, the first floor here, or I'd, I'd like to see something more, more modern, you know, whether it's a metal panel um, for, uh, treatment on the upper story and really differentiate it. But right now it's kind of just nowhere in between. It's somewhere in between. It doesn't really have a, have a decision one way or the other. So if I guess the question for the architect is the intent for it to um, to blend more in terms of the historic nature of the building, or is it to be a more uh, modern addition and clearly identify where the historic portion of the building is and the new? And this is a question I'm sure you're going to get from the historic commission who also needs to review this facade. So I think it's important that we talk through it. Um, that's fair. I think to answer that, 
we didn't want to mimic the structure as a, as a historic structure. Uh, and at the same time, I don't think we wanted it to stand out too harshly given its current context. Uh, so I, I think our aim was right down the middle. Um, I think we, if, if we're gonna have to pick a side there, I think that's a discussion I'm gonna have to have with John and the owner. Okay, fair enough. Um, the, I'd, I'd echo um, Ken's concerns about the cornice material and staying away from, from PVC. Um, I also had a question about the window material. I didn't see that called out. Is that a vinyl clad, metal clad, wood? What are the, what is the window material? I believe at this time we have them called out as vinyl. Um, again, we'll meet with historic and whatever they choose for the front is likely going to be on the rest of the building. Uh, so that may end up being fiberglass or something similar. Uh, at this time, I, I, it, is, it is intended to be vinyl. Okay, yeah, I think that they're, they're definitely gonna weigh in on that. Um, I also had a question about the um, materials at the uh, new storefront facade, which is, I believe, in the bottom left-hand corner there. Um, was that called out as fiber cement or is there um, more detail as to what the storefront material is um, in that particular area? Uh, the new construction was intended to be fiber cement board and batten similar to what's on the story above. Right, so I would definitely um, recommend that you relook at, at that area. Um, I'm definitely not in favor of the board and batten um, fiber cement at the, at the storefront. Um, again, I would recommend um, whether it's a uh, metal panel and um, more a storefront framing system, um, but it, it, should, it should marry into the, the structure below. And I think that that's a really foreign element to, to add into that particular area. Um, and Peter, I would just add too, I mean, um, and for members of the board, we, this was all the same as the previous meeting. So you had no materials called out at the previous meeting. So we had said well, we, that we, we wanted uh, clarification uh, at the, at this meeting with, regarding all of your materials. We'd also ask for samples, which we don't have. I don't believe that's true. I believe those materials were called out in the finish key on the top of the elevations in the last meeting. It was called out during the meeting that we did not have the, the materials. R regardless, it's not acceptable as it okay. as it is to me. Right. Just didn't know that it was so negative in that last meeting is all. Um, let's see. The last item I have here, and again, I'm sure that Historic is going to bring this up to you as well. I believe that the fence material is called out as vinyl to mimic uh, wrought iron. And um, I would um, I would recommend that again, rather than going with a, a vinyl, let's try and limit the, um, the plastic elements that we have in this building and actually go with a wrought iron if that's what it is intended to, to be. Um, I believe that my colleagues covered everything else. Uh, before I open this up to the public, for comment, I will see if, oh, I'm sorry, I had one more element. Um, it was actually regarding the signage plan. So um, Jenny, if you could go to that sheet with, uh, I think there's one example of um, a signage feature. And while Jenny's pulling that up, what I'd actually like to see is a signage plan for for the, the building that shows um, that, articulates what the um, allowable signage would be for both elevate for the full elevation of both sides of the of the building so that when your tenants either turn over or replace existing signage that um, it's clearly shown what what is approved for the building in total um, as opposed to one particular element, because this clearly doesn't, um, you know, we, we, th this is, is for one particular 
uh, facade, but we have a corner. There are other areas where I think we need to um, review the signage because I would like within this approval it to be clear that um, the signage when changed needs to be upgraded to the current signage bylaws and um, having an elevation that we can include as an exhibit would, um, would, would do that without having your tenants need to come back for a special permit for um, each of their, their signage applications. And Jean and Ken, I wanted to get your, and, and Steve, your, your sense on that as well. Um, I think it's important that we articulate what will be approved in the future on this building with regard to signage. Rachel, will we, uh, if we do that, okay, I know that some signs generally saying if you, I'll take it, I'll, I'll give you an example. You know the leader sign right at the corner there? Yes. That doesn't really mean anything. I think it's just oversized and everything else. Way so, oversigned, uh, yes. Uh, but if someone was to take over that space and they were, they were to get, wouldn't that be grandfathered in and they can go ahead and reuse that sign and just, uh, just change the letters and the sign would still be the same? Would that be allowed? That's what I'm suggesting is that, that I, I don't think that, again, if we're approving a major renovation of this structure, that I, I would prefer that all of the tenants be required to, um, to upgrade their signage currently to meet the current signage bylaws with the investment that is being made in this building. In lieu of that, I'm suggesting that when uh, the signage is changed, that pre-existing non-conforming conditions are not um, going to be uh, approved and that we have a signage plan included within this package that the tenants need to adhere to that are in compliance with our current signage bylaws. I think one problem with that, Rachel, is that uh, if each of the retailers have gone for a special permit with respect to their particular space, then they may have to be treated uh, individually with respect to nonconformity. Uh, I don't think that we can say in a blanket way that we're going to take away all of the non-conforming rights that uh, existing tenants have, because some of the that's not what I'm. That's not what I'm saying. I'm. I'm not saying that um, we would make them. We would require them to change their signage today, but in the in the future, that they would be required to uh, adhere to the existing. The, the current signage bylaw. But new tenants, my point is, new tenants, right, right, Rachel? If something new tenants or existing tenants when they when they change their signage. But my point is that if something is non-conforming, it's non-conforming, and uh, there's no statute of limitations uh, with respect to that non-conformity. Uh, if in fact uh, a retailer uh, entered into and negotiated a lease that's a contract they have with my client and they have certain rights that flow from that relationship. And I, I'm just not sure you can do this in a blanket way. Uh, I think that uh, you can certainly come up with uh, a concept in terms of what you might wanna do in terms of signage for the overall building, but whether you can have that applicable to each and every retail unit, uh, I think that's problematic. I'll leave that to others. Rachel, uh, Jean, may, please. I, may I say something? Please. So I'm, I'm in agreement with the idea that it would be great if all the signs were consistent with the sign bylaw, but they're not. And they were, you know, apparently approved or went in um, without the current sign bylaw. So I agree that they are, um, you know, allowed to continue as non-conforming signs. Um, I am not clear whether, let's say, one of the 
tenants were to leave, if a new tenant would be able to come in and say, well, that sign was twice the size of what's allowed, but because it was there, I can do a sign that's twice the size. I don't think that they could put up a new non-conforming sign that's different. But I think that maybe the best thing to do would be to just put a special permit in, permit condition in that says something along the lines of um, when any tenant leaves that the sign must come down and then any new sign must be consistent with what is then the sign by law. That I think that I, I'll be interested to what attorney Anessi has to say about that, but I think that's a way to both protect the non-conforming uses of the existing tenants, but to say that the new tenants don't inherit the sign of the old tenant. What do you think, Attorney Messi? Well, traditionally, the way the building inspector over the years, building inspectors have interpreted nonconformity is that if a new tenant comes into space, and the new tenant is not going to do something markedly different than what the old tenant did, in many cases, that new tenant may not even need a special permit. They could piggyback onto the prior nonconformity. Right, That's been right. the case for years. Right, but this, what, what I'm wondering, since this time by law is just a little bit over a year old, and it was rewritten to try to make it better, is um, the ability of the landlord, the building owner, to require the old tenant to remove the sign when the old tenant vacates. Therefore, there's nothing there. And once the sign is removed, that's the end of the non-conforming use. Then when the new tenant comes in, they're subject to the current rules. Now, I'm not sure, that's why I asked your opinion, but I think that's a way to get to what Rachel is interested in. Something and I'll like actually that. ask Jenny to, to weigh in. My understanding is that the majority of these signs were um, actually administratively approved and not approved by special permit. Is that correct? Right. None of these signs were approved under an environmental design review special permit. They were all approved administratively. So with that in mind, I think that Rachel's original suggestion which is to put in a special condition um, that simply says at such time as when a tenant turn turns over um, and there is a new tenant with a need for a new signage, that it should comply with whatever template signage um, you wanna put together, you know, sort of here's where it should be located, here's the rough dimensions for the Medford Street side and the Mass Ave side, and then also the corner unit. Um, which is where Leader Bank is right now, that at such time, the tenant can refer to those design standards, if you will, which are now, which would be in compliance with our current sign bylaw, which was put in place in 2019. Um, and if they chose not to, they would then have to come to the redevelopment board for a special permit, which is what we do in other situations, by the way. Also, no, there is no situation where a sign just goes in. All of the signs are subject to an internal review um, with inspectional services and my department um, for either a temporary sign or a permanent sign. So it's either one of those two pathways or if you don't like the advice that either one of those departments are providing, then you go to the redevelopment board to request either larger signage, more signage, you know, there's a lot of other situations, obviously, this board is familiar with. But what we're asking for is a special permit condition that simply provides a reference point for future tenants. It is not saying to remove all the signage right now and put in something new, but rather when there's turnover, to be able to refer to sort of a design guide that would be approved by this board so that you can use it for future tenants. Is that accurate, Rachel? Yes. Okay. And I believe that is within keeping and what is allowed, certainly. Um, under the purview of this board and would also be, you know, it, it would not penalize any current, current tenants, which is, I think, very important. 
I, I also believe last meeting we said we I think we actually brought that up as an idea that we could actually do that. So we're obviously more than okay with that. And I say it doesn't require any sign to come down or the or the building order to do anything right now other than to have this template available. I could just add one more thing, Rachel. Please, Jenny. I think just what, what is being said, though, is what's also in our memo, which is we still are lacking that sort of just this, the, what I'm showing on the screen right now might be the template that you wish to use for Medford Street. I'm not sure what, you know, I, I think you need to be very clear. This is the future Medford Street signage, Mass Ave, you know, sort of put the sign package together, if you will. We, yeah, we can do that. I mean, something to keep in mind, too, you take Medford Street it's hard to do a blanket design. Say someone comes in and they combine two spaces or three spaces and now all of a sudden you might have a longer sign. You know, there's a lot of things that can that can change with this. We have it kind of set up as, which we showed on um, uh, the rendering of the Mass Ave side, kind of our perfect world design would be a, a rectangular type uh, banner that's not too thick and complies with the with the length that is shown in our rendering, similar to how Grace's nails look, maybe a little bit smaller than that, which is shown per scale. And if a tenant has a longer space, the, I mean, the Medford side is a very good example. If, uh, if restaurants left and someone new came in and said, I want to combine these two or three spaces, they'd probably have, you know, then it would be one big space. So it would be a longer <laughs> sign than what's showing here. I'd also like to require jump. that would then require the redevelopment board special permit review, though. So that would be right. in a different category anyway, because it so would then, likely so then, trigger then some facade improvements. Right. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to jump in and, and point out that what we're currently showing applies to both Mass Ave and Medford uh, in every space except for the leader bank space. Uh, in both cases, the shell building has this brick colonnade we're aligning to the cornice on top and dropping down three feet, and that is the dimension of your signing. Um, that, that can be applied to every existing space on Medford and Mass Ave, uh, with the exception of Leader Bank. Uh, and in this case, uh, just the way the facade has been done on Leader Bank, we have no idea what's under that skin. Uh, so it'd be very difficult for us to draw that one. <clears throat> Dean, you had something? Yeah, so I guess a couple of thoughts. One is I had raised the idea that when a tenant vacates, the, the owner takes down the sign if the tenant hasn't taken it. You know, so that's one thing to think about. And the second is under our rules, if somebody comes in for a sign permit, and it's consistent with the bylaw, they don't come to us. It's just administratively approved by the department. So it's not really that difficult for a new tenant, um, even if they don't have all of this detail, to be able to get a sign um, approved without coming to the board, as long as the sign's consistent with um, the sign bylaw. So I'm not sure how much detail is actually necessary other than just putting in a special permit condition about um, removing the old sign and um, you know something about informing the new tenants that they must you know meet the current sign bylaw, just something like that. I, I hear your point, although I see the range of difficulties that tenants seem to have with interpreting and understanding the uh, existing signage bylaw. And I think to the architect's point, um, having an exhibit such as this to me is a benefit that the landlord is able to provide the tenants in terms of clear direction um, and a consistent intent and again, they can always come in front of us to your point, Gene, if they wish to deviate from, from what the building intends. Yeah, I'm fine with that too. Okay, great. Rachel, can I add one more thing here? Please. Uh, I know we're talking all about the signs, but what about the awnings? I mean, is that saying that they're gone or they don't, they don't exist? Or, I mean, that's so integral with the signage. Uh, do we keep them? We're not allowing them or we want them. We want them the same shape. 
or can they be different so they can um, show up? I, I, it just, I don't know. I think we're, we're opening a whole can of worms here on just this one little thing here. I think it's important because um, definitely when I look at the uh, that this corner here, the leader bank sign just sort of jumps out at you. I think the other ones are not that bad. Uh, you know, it just shows kind of urban growth over time. Um, and it has this kind of variety, right? Um, and that's okay. Or it being all similar, which is all one project, that's okay too. Um, right, J Jenny. Do you have that? Do you have the elevation um, that shows Medford Street? Because I believe that the awnings are um, all below the signage. Correct, or am I? No, go right on the signage. I believe they, in this case, are the signage. It's that uh, picture. Um, yeah, they're, they're right. Some of them are above. 901? Yep. yep, some of them are above. Uh, can I respond to Ken? Please. Uh, so if you, if you flip back to the signage that we were suggesting there, we have it called out as it would be either an infill panel or a three foot projecting awning of the same dimension. Uh, it would be up to the tenant uh, is what we were suggesting. But in this case, they would be all uniform in dimension. Okay. Madam Chair. Steve, go ahead. Yes. One, one thing I'd, our bylaw has a section that covers non-conforming uses and structures. Uh, although I've read it a number of times, I've never sort of gone through it with the, you know, in an attempt to in, you know, try to apply um, those rules to signs specifically. Um, I mean, I personally would like to at least do that exercise myself before making a requirement of the applicant. Um, you know, I recognize that when a business turns over, I, you know, to the extent that an existing sign constitutes a non-conforming use, I would expect that when a, you know, a, a space turns over the, you know, the, the new business is probably going to want a new sign. And I think that problem just may fix itself. And end up fixing itself. Um, I would be okay with having, like, defining an area, you know, like picking an area of the the facade and saying that this is the sign band. Uh, but I would like to to you know have. I'd like. I'd hope that we could allow some variety in the types of signs that are that the individual business owners put up. Uh, one of the things I I really like about the Medford Street facade is the fact that all the signage signs are different and you can you really get the sense that it's it's it is a group of small businesses anyway those were my thoughts <laughs> right thanks steve and i and i do agree with you i i think that what i appreciate yeah. about this exhibit is that there's no requirement with regard to the material the um you know the um typeface any of any of those particular items even quite frankly the shape it has to fit mm -hmm. within that Mm -hmm. that square so uh, rectangle rather so I, I agree with you uh, any other questions or comments from the board before we turn this over for public comment Jean yeah I do have one which I forgot to ask before on the alleyway we got one comment that said the alleyway would be so shaded that these plants would I've forgotten what it was exactly not have enough sun. Do, are you able to comment on that? Did you see that? Did, can you comment on it? Aaron, I don't know if there's anything, any color you can provide around that. I mean, obviously we can't control the, the sun, but um, I would imagine that when they design for this type of landscaping that it, it doesn't need sun. 24 seven, but Aaron, can you speak to that? Um, yeah, I mean, she, she would have selected certain plants to be situated there with the proper shade. I mean, th those, those will have some shade there cause you're, you're in the alleyway portion. So I, but you know, I, I any questions regarding the plants, I re I, I'm really would need to defer to our landscape architect, um, which, which we could have her on if, if we need to, to talk through the planting schematic I, I i guess 
I mean, I don't know the answer. I just, if, if you need to come back one more time, I don't think you need to have the landscape architect here, at least for me anyhow. I think you just need to report that, you know, she's chosen X type of plants because they'll be able to do well in this incredibly shaded um, location. We can definitely provide that. Uh, that's not a problem. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Jean. That's it. Great. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to open um, this public hearing up for uh, public comment. Any member of the public wishing to comment uh, or ask a question of the applicant, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of the screen. I will call on you in the order the hands are raised. Please note that you will have up to three minutes to speak. And uh, I would request that you identify yourself by first, last name and address. And the first uh, speaker we will have this evening is identified by uh, Gary. There, uh, let's see, uh, let me put uh, my video on. Uh, here we are, hi there. So I've got a, a, a Gary Goldsmith, uh, 91 Beverly Road. Um, I've just got a brief uh, question, and that is, I noticed that you're talking about using electric heating under the sidewalk, which I think is a really good idea uh, in terms of snow. Um, uh, however, it's a relatively narrow uh, walkway, and it's uh, it's in the sh it's shaded, so it will be cool. So my question is: Is there a plan for where the melt water from the snow is going to go, so it doesn't pool and create an ice problem either on the walkway or on the street adjacent to it? That's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Gary. Um, and I'll turn that over to. Uh, the applicant, John, I'm not sure if you or Peter would like to answer that question. Aaron, can you just jump in and explain how the drainage works back there again? Yeah, sure, no problem. Both, both walkways on either side um, are designed as pervious pavers. So any snow melt or rainwater is designed to um, drain right through the paver system. And there's a stone course beneath that uh, was designed to hold um, in infiltrate up to a hundred year storm on either side. Jenny, if you could actually go to, do you have our drainage plan? Let me, let me pull that up. Yeah. Okay, great. And we also have, in addition to the, to the uh, paver systems, we have an underground infiltration system. And that system was designed to infiltrate uh, all, all the existing roof runoff. So, we have greatly reduced the runoff coming from the existing site um, and, and you won't see any ponding from the proposed development. That's excellent since uh, the hundred year storms now seem to be uh, decade year storms. Right. Yeah, we, we designed because the existing site had all the roof leaders coming off the building, dumping onto the parking and it would sheet flow we, we assumed it's gonna sheet flow back to park place. So in order to deal with that, we had to put all the existing roof leaders into an underground system and design that to infiltrate a hundred year storm with no overflow because there's no way to overflow it. So it's, it has to go all, it's all going underground. Great, thank you. Sounds for good, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, speaker will be Don Seltzer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I would like to comment on just one narrow aspect of this plan, uh, literally narrow, the proposed uh, rear alleyway. At present, this space is used as a loading and service area for the businesses in the building. It's about 18 feet wide right now and is cluttered with pallets, small dumpsters, chairs for workers on their break, and just general trash lying around. The proposed plans make the space only half as wide and assigns three different uses for it. In addition to, to the servicing and delivery area, it's to be a pedestrian walkway, 
and is also intended to satisfy a large portion of the landscaped area requirement. I have sent the board a detailed analysis of the solar exposure of this landscaping strip. Uh, I request that this correspondence be posted with other documentation for this project. What this analysis shows is that during the growing season, these plantings will receive only about 35 minutes of sunlight each day. And during most of the winter, they will receive zero minutes of sunlight for months. The plantings chosen for this strip are not suitable for this environment and few decorative plants are. Uh, the question of snow removal has come up and it's suggested that electric heating and the infiltration system uh, will be able to deal with it. Um, maybe it can deal with 100 year storms during the summer, but I don't know what's gonna happen when the ground freezes. The most likely scenario is that each business owner will shovel the back of their store or restaurant and will simply dump the snow onto the landscape strip. And with no winter sun to melt the piled up snow, it's not likely that these plantings will survive their first winter. The narrow pedestrian walkway will also compete for space with the businesses that use that same strip for their deliveries and they leave pallets and other items outside their doors. This walkway may not meet ADA standards for unobstructive width. It's simply trying to do too much with too narrow an alleyway and it will result in none of the three uses being done properly. It will really fail for all three of them. I think it should be reconsidered. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to uh, speak this evening uh, with regard to this docket? Jenny? Just uh, want to note that um, Mr. Seltzer's um, correspondence is posted to the agenda under Great. correspondence received. Thank you, Jenny. I didn't see it. I'm sorry, I didn't see it there this afternoon. Perhaps it's been posted since. That's okay. I just wanted to make sure that everybody listening knew that it was posted to correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no more hands raised, uh, we will close public comment on docket number 3673. Um, and I will uh, turn this back over to the board to discuss next steps. Uh, so we had a couple of items that were identified that um, need to be uh, addressed some, um, and I think what we need to decide if whether some or all of these could be done uh, administratively such that we could um, move for approval or whether or not we would need to see this applicant back um, again for an additional hearing. And I'll just run through those that I have on my list. And then um, perhaps if the members of the board could identify if I've missed any and their thoughts on um, any that they'd like to have addressed um, potentially at another meeting or whether or not, or their thoughts on the administrative approval. I have uh, the note about uh, the uh, looking at a tree to replace the planting area with the shrub uh, across the, the sidewalk from the bicycle parking. Is that correct? The correct placement, Jean? Right. Um, I have a, um, a note as, as Jenny pointed out in her, uh, her uh, notes um, for, for this evening that the applicant is still working with the town to identify a potential loading designation on Medford Street or in conjunction with um, the next steps on the parklet. We have a, a TDM plan, which the applicant has identified they are still working with the department to solidify. And to Jean's point, um, we are clarifying that that is for commercial tenants. Uh, we have the note from Kin that PVC uh, ASIC not be used for the cornice or for any long stretches of trim work. Uh, we have the request to explore a different material uh, where the fiber cement panels with the board and batten are used both at the storefront as well as at the upper story. Um, 
And I think that the signage discussion we boiled down to um, a wording that could be added into special conditions as opposed to uh, additional exhibits. I will turn it now over to the board for any comments to that um, and to discuss next steps. And I'll start with Ken. Uh, well, I'm very supportive of, of this project. I think it's, it's a good project uh, based on our um, mixed use uh, that we were trying to push along uh, Mass Ave. I, I don't know. Um, I'm I, I'm I'm on the fence right now. I, I want to I want to approve this as is with a, with maybe an administrative, but uh, the the elevations right now uh, the the only the only biggest issue I have is still the elevations, and they're looking with the board and bat. Everything else I think can be handled administratively, and I don't know how you uh, what you feel about how how we go about adjusting that, or even Jennifer, do you feel like uh, you can handle that administratively or not. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, if you have a question for Jenny, I can turn it over to uh, Jenny for her perspective. Yeah, what, what are your feelings, Jenny? If we said, okay, um, you go ahead and approve the elevations so it's, so it's not like a, a born batten, um, I'm, I'm okay, if you're okay with that, to approve the project as is with, with a, a, you know, all the uh, notes we, we've stated. But uh, if you're not, then I don't, you know, I'm kind of on the fence having them come back just to show those elevations again. Um, I think it's a good question. I think that I, I would suggest that there are these administrative items that have just been outlined um, are all typical items that do sometimes come back for administrative approval before they proceed. Um, and sometimes there's even back and forth <laughs> after um, things are in progress um, when additional amendments might be needed to, for, for example, for materials. I think that it would be fine to specify what you don't want to see in materials, but in, uh, you know, in, in fairness to the full process, the Arlington Historical Commission will need to approve the final, the final, final, um, you know, uh, both the, you know, any, you know, final design elements, they'll certainly have a say about windows and we'll also probably have a say uh, or certainly opinions about um, you know, the, the types of materials that are being proposed. They'll wanna see more details about that. Um, so I would say that, that that would be acceptable. I think a final planting plan is something I typically do review and a couple of things relate to a final planting plan. Um, same thing for the signage uh, suggestions. Um, and then I, I think that the TDM plan is actually very, that's similar to what happened with 882 MassAF. Um, that decision was made without a final TDM plan, which was then something that we would review administratively after the fact. So I, I think that all of these things could be handled um, administratively. Whether or not you're comfortable proceeding tonight is a different <laughs> question, um, you know, and that's something that's something separate, but certainly we can handle these things administratively. Rachel, after hearing what uh, Jenny said, I think I'm comfortable because it also has to go through historic. So I'm comfortable approving it with these uh, with the following comments. So I'm okay. Great, thank you, Ken. Jean, oh, you're on mute, Jean. You hit that bingo item. I know I did. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I. I, I'm in agreement to, I'll add the one item that you didn't add, Rachel, which was the planting along the alleyway and whether they could put in plants that would survive a limited amount of sun, which is part of the planting plan. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm satisfied with um, approving it with all of the um, administrative approvals needed later. I'll point out that we're waiving or not waiving, we're adjusting quite a number of requirements which we're allowed to do that will all need to appear in the special permit. A lot of them were listed in the initial memo from the department on this. Um, for the side of the building, the, the what it looks like. 
Um, I would sort of just encourage Jenny to feel free to talk to Kim and Rachel when we get another proposal from um, um, the applicant, because I would defer to both of you to make sure you're comfortable with it, because you were the two who raised the issue and um, had some suggestions on how to deal with it. Great, thank you, Jean. Steve. I, I have um, one or two questions. And a lot of this, basically they involve the historical commission review. So I'm really not, um, I'm not familiar with their, that board's review process. And I guess first I'd like to understand, you know, the scope of what they will be looking at. Like for example, um, would the historical commission have the ability uh, to say, you know, we really want you to do such and such on the second story of the Medford Street facade? Great question. I will turn that over to Jenny to confirm the scope of the historic commission review. Um, I think the historical commission in this case, because it's a, a significant property and listed as one, and it's also within an historic district, could review any number of different things related to the property, um, which includes anything on the exterior, the facade elements, windows, um, other material, you know, any materials being used. Um, any changes to a facade, they'll want to review and see those. And then of course, signage. They actually always review signage, including for this property, when it changes, not just by the department, but when it's under historical commission jurisdiction, we also have them review it. Um, the chair of the Arlington Historical Commission is also with us tonight. I would be uh, happy to further defer to her for any additional points on this, but they tend to have a, a, a you know, a fairly expansive point perspective in terms of looking at all of the historical elements that are in keeping with both the district and if there's an individual listing, then of the architectural or significant elements of that particular property. This is a little bit different because we've got things that are changing with existing facades and existing materials, but also in addition. So I think they'll take all of this under consideration when they're reviewing. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, the other question, and it's not really directed to or question, comment, concern, uh, if the Historical Commission were to recommend facade changes, say, on the on the second floor for Medford Street, um, I would hope that, you know, the, you know, the same, at least theme, material, color, you know, general composition would be carried around where, um, you know, basically that the change be made uniformly. Um, I assume the historical commission could require that if they were, if they so desired, but, um, you know what my only concern is that i would hope that we just not end up in a in a in a position where one part of the one side of the building look, looks one way and the other side looks completely different that that's basically it thank you steve i i think that's a a good comment and um i'm know that that'll be reflected in our notes which um i i believe since joanne is uh, Robinson is here. Um, the, the Historic Commission will um, also be in receipt of our notes from this evening um, where, where we discuss this project as well. But I'm in agreement with that. Uh, any other comments uh, from the board before we uh, craft a motion to uh, approve with uh, some of the special conditions that we just identified? And I'm happy to run through those um, as we craft a, a motion. Uh, Rachel, also, I think we have to add uh, some of the things we're, uh, we're, we we're do. Uh, what Jean said earlier. Yep, we do. And I need to pull that list up. Jenny, do you have that readily available? I'm looking for it in my docket right here. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm going to pull up the Word version one second. Great, thank you.
is this is the word version of the document. Great. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate that. So we would be uh, looking to uh, looking for a motion to identify the board's uh, findings. Oops relative to uh, items one through four under section four in uh, Jenny's memo. Jean, were there any other items with regard to, sorry, you're on mute again. I, I can't think of any offhand except number four should say subject to administrative approval of the transportation demand management. Okay. I, uh, I, yeah, I don't recall if there were any others. Great. All right, so subject to um, the approvals, or excuse me, to the findings in section four um, and the conditions spelled out in section five with the addition and uh, the, the special conditions with the following special conditions added. And perhaps Jenny, if you could um, note these as we go through them. So um, that the applicant review the replacement of uh, the shrubbery across from the rear bicycle parking with one tree of appropriate size. I believe that these uh, condi the conditions already address loading. Is that correct, Jenny? We don't need to add that in as a separate special condition? So, um, no, no, and I, I'm not sure I would phrase this special condition in this way. I, I, um, what, I, I, what I would suggest is that, um, well, first, the, the loading, to answer that question first, sorry. The loading, I don't think would have would be a special condition. It's a separate review process. It would not just be for this building, it would be for other businesses on Medford Street as well. Um, and I'm, I would be reluctant to make that a condition of this permit. Sure. Um, because it's out of their control. Okay. Um, okay. What I would suggest in terms of the other special conditions would be that, uh, I'm just going to type, so pardon me for a moment. Um, I will obviously create more detail around each one of these, but I just want to make sure that I'm capturing them for right I now. That, I, that's, I'm not going to type them all out this exact second, but no. um, Jenny, could you add elevations? Those are the, the, what's that? Sorry, I didn't mean, uh, can you add elevations, please? So this is what it says in our general conditions all the time, um, which is the final design, sign, exterior material, et cetera. Um, is et cetera, that essentially it's it's handled administratively unless I see a, a substantial deviation from what we've discussed or what was approved um, to go back to the redevelopment board. Um, I was going to add one more special condition though, which would state, so I guess, sorry, I'm jumping around here. Would this, is this acceptable to you? This is our typical general condition. I just want, want to add in um, maybe like a sense or two of, of don'ts, like 
that's that's what I was going to suggest for the special condition. But for this, this is what I typically. Well, Jeff, it's fine. I, I'm okay with that. Okay. I just don't want them to have the vinyl siding. Sorry, Jane, you. you... Yeah. No, no, wait till you're done, Jane. Oh, uh, you know, uh, the vinyl um, cornices. The PVC, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and the board and batten design. And then uh, the plastic, uh, the plastic railings uh, on the, on the parapet. I uh, I think um, aluminum would be fine. It doesn't have to be cast iron. Uh, are you okay with that, uh, Rachel? Yes, I just don't want to see the plastic. Okay, I, I just cast iron and and aluminum is a big difference there. I understand. Uh, Let's see, we also had a note about um, no mechanical equipment um, can be mounted on the wall in the, the alleyway. I know that um, they indicated that there wasn't a lot of room to be there, but that has a way of creeping its way back in. So I think it's important to add in as a special condition. Thank you, yes, that's great. And then we also have the special condition of um, any change in tenancy uh, requires that the uh, tenants conform with the landlord's signage plan and the uh, currently enforced town signage bylaws. Any deviation from those uh, to request to do or any request to deviate from those um, from those requirements will require a submission for uh, EDR. Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry, Jean, I, I forgot you had your hand up. <laughs> That's okay. I think there are some other findings we have to make. Um, one is to adjust the setbacks. Um, another is the open space. I think that's that's number two. Oh, I'm sorry, we did. The open space, so it's not here. Um, can you, um, do you have something perhaps to uh, insert here? I, I think just the proposed open space is acceptable. And then um, the drive aisle dimensions are slightly smaller. So we have to find that the drive aisle dimensions are acceptable. And um, let me see what else I have here. Um, Let me see what you have. I um I'm um I don't have I um just can't jump around right now and uh, <laughs> uh does anybody I'm sorry the it's you, the drive aisle have, the drive aisle just so. the driveway aisle okay yeah it's <laughs> from twenty two to twenty All right. I think that's it. I'll I'll adjust the language in all of these to be the same. Sorry, I'm just typing right now. Okay. And I will do the same for the special conditions. Um, so you'll you'll receive this um, when I send around uh, for signatures. Great. Thank you, Jenny. Um, is there anything else? What did I just get the two? Is that it, Jean? I think so, yeah. And I put usable and landscaped open space, by the way. Okay. Okay. Um, anything further? That's all that I have, Ken. Nope, I'm, I'm good. Steve? Uh, nothing further from me. Great, Jean? Oh, this looks good. I'm just realizing after all that talk about the Arlington Historical Commission, I need to make sure that I, to the I mentioned them. 
Absolutely. So, Rachel, is it okay if I just say uh, sub motion? Uh, yeah. Well, it, yeah. Is there a motion to approve the uh, the 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 docket with the findings and uh, special conditions as edited by Jenny? So motions. Do, do we have the roof plan in there? I didn't notice if the roof plan was in there. That it be designed so at least fifty percent of the roof is available for solar. Did we, I didn't see that in there. It's in their plans. It's in their I'm plans. Sure. So oh, that would be. Well, except that their plans just say solar, but the, the tentative placement of the utilities on the roof wouldn't really allow that. And they said that they could adjust that. I, I, you lost me, Eugene, because um, on the existing portion where they put the, sec the building on top of it, Mm -hmm. Those are exhaust from the right, but they all the restaurants, right? And you can't put any. Uh, what, Jen, what Jenny put there is fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, that, I'm okay with that. I'm just is saying that that, you, that covers it, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Yep. Thank you. Great. Uh, so Ken, I believe that you had a um, motion to approve the docket with the findings and special conditions uh, as edited by the board. Yes. Is there a second? And with the administrative approvals by- By the, by the department and further review by the historic commission. Right. So I will, motion. I will second it with that addition. Great. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Ken. So we will take a roll call vote, uh, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. I am a yes as well. Congratulations and thank you for uh, your time and your responsiveness to the thank board. You. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I, this is Cynthia Pasciutto and the rest of the Pasciutto family. I'm sorry, we're, we're interrupting. Um, we just wanna thank our team. Um, They've, they've really helped us out. Um, and the board, of course, um, we're trying to make an objective improvement to the center um, and kind of bring a little bit of life back. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you. We're all looking forward to um, the next steps in this project. So thank you again. All right, so that closes docket number uh, 3673. And we will now move to the third item in our public hearings, which is the continuation of docket number 3348, uh, the reopening of uh, the special permit at 833 Mass Avenue. And I believe um, you're just spending a lot, a lot of time with us here tonight. A lot tonight. of stuff here tonight, <laughs> <I'm okay. laughs> uh, Yes, uh, I'm so, back. Uh, yeah, Attorney Nessie, if you wanted to give us an update as to where you are, I believe that you had some um, leak breaking plans that you uh, yes. wanted to share with us this evening. Uh, sure. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Monty French is uh, with us. He's the architect. And uh, Jeff Noyes is with us. And Phil Randall, the contractor, is with us as well. And we did submit two concept plans. Uh, virtually at the last minute, and I apologize for that, Jenny. I did the best I could, but uh, I got them in as quickly as I could. Uh, and we're not, uh, Jane, I want you to know that we're not uh, stuck with just those two concept plans. I know you asked us to look at going out the back last time, and we have done that. And I think Monte may have some comments about that as well. Uh, with respect to uh, what uh, there may be some issues with regard to doing that as to how it gets accomplished. But in any event, we have two concept plans. One of them is residential only. That's concept number one. And that would be 
essentially maintaining the existing building uh, and, and the placement of that building on the site. Uh, we would uh, recapture, as we've indicated in our narrative, the side porch on the ground floor as living area, and we'd wind up with a total of five residential units. Uh, the other plan is a plan that you've seen in some guise before, maybe as long as a year ago, not your fault, uh, but our fault. Uh, and that is a plan that where we, and that's concept number two, where we propose to move the, uh, the siting of the building up close to the Mass Ave to have it uh, similar to the CVS siting and other sightings along Mass Ave. I know that had been discussed approximately a year ago, uh, and there was some sentiment at that time for that to happen before everything broke down. And again, not because of your uh, fault, but uh, because of our fault. Uh, essentially, what we would try to do if we moved the siting of the building up close to the Mass Ave is to retain the facade portion of the building uh, as much as we could. I know that there's been a lot of dis uh, discussion between folks in the town, and I'm gonna have a lot more discussion uh, next uh, on November 2nd with the Historical Commission about the building as well. Uh, but if we did this, that would give us a total of seven residential units. And we all would also have some commercial space. Now, I know a year ago, there was uh, some feeling that it would be kind of nice if we could have a mixed use uh, uh, situation as far as the site is concerned. Concept number two would give us a mixed use site. We'd have commercial space, we'd have some office space and not a frivolous amount of office space, 1,313 square feet on the first floor with another residential unit on the first floor and there'd be a total of seven residential units. Now, I just need to, you to understand, as, as I'm sure you do, I'm trying to make something happen here. I've been dealt a hand that I'm dealing with. And uh, I, I have to deal with historical. I have to deal with you folks as well. I was asked at the last historical committee, uh, a committee meeting by Joanne Robinson, well, Mr. Anissi, do you have a plan? And I said, no, I don't have a plan because I need to first present a plan to the ARB to try to get a feeling for them as to where, as to the direction I ought to be going with respect to a plan. Once I have some direction, which is what I need, I can then come back to you, uh, Ms. Robinson on the Historical Commission and present a plan to you. So the reason we're here this evening, and I've got Monty here as well, he can talk about, and I want you, Monty, to talk about both concepts. And I also want you to uh, address Gene Benson's comments last time uh, with respect to the, uh, the possibility of going out the back. You know that 10 parking spaces were allocated in the 2009 ARB decision to go out the back. You know that the, that decision said that there was ample room to go out the back as well. I'd want your opinion and your comments with respect to that. Monte, why don't you jump in now and talk about both concepts and also talk about whatever else you might have, including the possibility of going out the back. Thank you, Bob. Uh, yes, if we could start with uh, the concept one. Uh, the concept that retains the existing building. Um, there you go, thank you. Um, so this is just simply showing the existing building on the site. Uh, I know that you guys have seen this several times, but um, just kind of going back through things after several conversations with you all and Bob and Jeff and trying to look at how we can make this work. Um, our thoughts in our office are that because the, the, the building is set so far back and you know, presents a small challenge being 
uh, above the sidewalk grade and things like that, that we felt like it could be a, a good option to look at this as all residential. Um, it being so far back, potentially it was not a good fit for um, uh, a commercial use. And also we looked at it in the perspective of uh, the center stairwell uh, and how we can divide this up. So a left and right unit as we work our way up the building and then another unit at the top uh, is how it's essentially divided. So that was kind of our, our thinking behind this, that it would become more of a quiet, just a renovation of the house, uh, given that it's set so far back and kind of, I think that there's already been some sort of agreement in place about having to replace the siding and the windows. And this would kind of just, I guess, move right along with the notion that we're, we're gonna have to replace those things so that we would keep going with the renovation and, and, and renovate the house in total uh, with these five units in mind. So then kind of also expanding on uh, Mr. Benz's comments from the last meeting, I think I've missed a couple of meetings, but I, I know you're talking about Bob and, and adding to the rear, you know, and I think part of my understanding in the past was that uh, there was some sort of agreement with CVS and it was potentially, you know, I haven't seen it, but I, I guess it's been uh, explained to me that we can add to the rear. And if that's the case, you can see that there's the potential for that. And I think that that could be another thing that's explored with this concept. Um, you can see here, uh, these are the plans or just kind of diagrams, but they give general square footage of basically one bed and studio units uh, that I think are kind of doing well in the, in the area right now. Um, and I think probably we could easily supplement by adding to the rear. Um, but you can see that we're trying to keep the stairwell and keep the kind of all the original character of the house uh, on the exterior. There's no real additions in these schemes. We can explore uh, a scheme that would add to the rear and supplement that if we need to look at potentially bit larger units and more units. Uh, so that that's that's kind of where that came from. Uh, and then moving on to concept number two. So concept number two, as Bob mentioned, this is really just a quick diagram. Um, I don't hope, hopefully nobody's really focused in on details here, but the intention was to kind of, uh, you know, I think that there's been a few conversations about, you know, if we had to replicate the house or rep, build a new structure that we would replicate the character of the original house. Um, and that would be the intention here. And I think that that would take a, you know, much deeper critical analysis of the house for us to properly implement that. But this is the idea that we would move it here to allow us to expand even more and provide potentially more units than even what we've shown. Uh, some of the units are quite large at 1200 square feet and maybe we can have a few smaller units, but it does allow a little more uh, diversity in, in terms of the types of units we have. Uh, and again, it does offer the commercial space on the ground floor. In the previous schemes where it was more modern, um, I think we showed three floors of commercial at the front, but given today's climate uh, and for commercial space and the need for housing, we thought that this would be a, a potential good use of this and also just the, the nature of the house. Um, you know, I think if we had a three-story commercial space, it would involve an elevator and things like that. But this kind of speaks to some of the planning board initiatives with commercial space, but then also does address housing needs. And again, you know, we could probably divide it up a little bit different and get uh, potentially two or three more units into this building. Just, But that's the general idea is to replicate the house in its character uh, and expand and build new. So that's the concept for number two. So again, uh, thank you, Monty, for that. Uh, so again, uh, I need, to, uh, and we need direction. Uh, I mean, I can't go back before historical on November 2nd and not have something to say about what the thinking on the part of the members of the ARB might be in terms of what they might like to see on the site. 
I know there's been a lot of discussion about the history of the property and the like, and even in that decision uh, uh, in 2009, there was a comment by the ARB, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the property was on the significant list, that it wasn't significant. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm dealing with all of that at this point in terms of trying to make something happen and something is going to happen. Jeff Noyes has come to the realization, and I will say this very clearly, and Jeff can object to what I'm going to say if he wants to, but Jeff Noyes has come to the realization that time is up and this project has to, uh, has to move forward. Right now, he spent $35,000 to get rid of the asbestos on the exterior of the building. He spent $8,000 with respect to preparing the electrical work within the building. Uh, it's not turned on yet, not because of anything we have done or the town has done, but be uh, because the electric company hasn't turned it on yet. So he's spending money at this point. So he's paying a price for the fact that things have not gone the way they should have gone for a period of time. But again, all that being said, I'm here for direction. So I'd like to open it up to the members of the board and try to get some of that direction if I could. Great, thank you. I'll start with Jean. Yep, thank you, Bob and, and Monty for these two concepts. Um, let me start with, I guess, my major concern and then get to the two concepts. My major concern that is if you're subject to the demolition delay, which will end up being, I guess, one or two years, the town is then stuck with this boarded up building for what I think is an unacceptably long period of time. So that's sort of my background on it. Clearly, we can't um, comment officially on these because they haven't gone in an application, but I'll tell you what I think in general. I think in general, if the historic commission would say, if you do either or both of these, either one, you don't, you can go ahead and you don't need the demolition delay, then I think these are both good possibilities from my perspective. Um, what I specifically like about concept two, which I felt I couldn't have approved in your initial concept to us a couple of years ago, your initial concept to us a couple of years ago required the residents to walk through the CVS parking lot and come in the back. So this doesn't do that. So I think that's a major improvement. I don't, at this point, I can't say I have a strong feeling one way or the other between these two. But if you can get the historical commission to say one or both of these, you don't have to do the demolition delay, yeah. then I think you're dealing with us and we'll have to look at, are there zoning issues? Do we have to do any waivers? Do you need any variances? I wondered about the first one where you're over the setback but we can deal with that all at another time. Gene, I agree with everything you say. And oh, not, that's so unusual. We should celebrate. Yeah. Notwithstanding uh, everything that has happened over the last year or two, I think it's in the best interest of the town to get this done, okay? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. sitting there at this point. Uh, it's not an attractive site. It can be a, an attractive site whether concept one or concept two, we would prefer concept two because it comes up with a mixed use concept for the site, which I think would be something that might be favored by the master plan. It gives additional units. But again, my task is going to be with historical, okay? I don't want to see, and if Joanne Robinson is listening, I do not want to see a demolition delay. So Joanne, I, I'm gonna need to, to present something to you, hopefully that will pass muster with the commission so that we do not wind up with a demolition delay. Thank, thanks. Thank you, Jean. Any other 
questions or comments? No, I appreciate seeing these and I like the direction that seems to be headed at the moment. And I'm interested in seeing what the historical commission will do. Yeah. Great, thank you, Jean. Ken, you're on mute, Ken. Thank you, Rachel. Um, when you say commercial spec, I know it's still speculative, but is something is um, is it going to be an office or is it going to be an open concept um, kind of office where it's like someplace like the Wonder Bar, and where it has uh, like a bunch of startup offices and uh, like a microbrewery of um, startup companies or something like that there. Yeah, I, I think the original idea that we had kicked around um, some time ago was that it, similar to we work or kind of an incubator space of sorts. Okay, uh, I'm very supportive of that. And then also, uh, since there are graded in five units, I'm assuming there's going to be at least one affordable unit there. Would have to be. Yeah. Okay, I'm very supportive of that. Yeah. So here's my my personal um direction to you uh bob okay yep uh go scheme one if uh if there's a uh, demolition delay if there's no demolition delay go scheme two can i be any clearer <laughs> pretty clear okay that's my opinion okay. all right Great. thank you ken steve concepts um i have a you know, i i think i have a clear preference for number two um you know at seven units it would require uh it would trigger inclusionary zoning uh the second concept has a greater variety of unit types you know whereas the first one is just studio and one bedroom and finally um i like the idea of of pulling the building forward. I think that a, to me at least, a 39 foot setback on Mass Ave in a, in a business district is just too much. And I would much rather see the building come forward and hug the sidewalk. That's it. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, and again, since this is not a hearing on these two particular schemes, we won't be voting this evening, but as we are all giving you our individual feedback, I will agree 100% with the simplicity that Ken <laughs> answered you. Um, and uh, I will leave it at that. Um, before I get to a question, or before we, we talk at the board about the special permit that we currently have open, as opposed to the one that will need to be opened when whichever of these schemes moves forward after the next meeting with the historic commission. Um, are there any other comments before we open this up for, for public comment from the board? Okay, uh, that being said, I will uh, open this up for any member of the public who wishes to comment on this uh, open special permit please use the raise hand function. I will call on you in the order in which hands are raised. Please note that you will have up to three minutes to address this docket and please identify yourself by your first last name and address. And the uh, first speaker this evening will be, I believe that's Patricia Warden. Actually, it's, uh, am I unmuted? Yeah. You are, we can hear you, John. Oh, very good. Uh, yeah, it's actually it's John Gordon, but she she pushes the buttons for me because I don't know how to do it. Oh, I can't see. Uh, John Gordon, Jason Street. Um, uh, well, obviously, um, I like the the first concept that retains the historic building and and puts it to a new use, well, which it's actually it's had since uh, uh, way way back in uh, I think nineteen forty when Doctor Atwood died, um, sometime like that, long time ago. Uh, and it has had different uses in there. And uh, I think this this takes a perfectly good building, uh, 
that uh, basically has uh, good bones despite the abuses to which it's been subjected for the past 10, 12 years. And, um, and, and this uh, retains the building, uh, provides uh, uh, five units, um, and uh, makes use of the uh, investments that have been made to uh, uh, preserve it and put it back the way it should have been kept. And, um, and you know, that uh, having a little setback on Mass Avenue, particularly in, adjacent to the very important uh, uh, building of the Baptist Church, uh, you know, it it's, uh, says a little bit of, about an older island than it used to exist before we had so much um, <clears throat> untoward uh, development. I mean, you, you, you look at... Uh, you look at our neighbors in Lexington. Once you get beyond the east, very east part of it, and you see what what an avenue like this can 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 be, and we can we, we most of our we've lost most of that, uh, but 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 we, we we can we can keep a little bit of it, and it's uh, I, 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 I I applaud them for bringing forward uh, the, the first plan as I favored the previous plans that retain the building. I think it's important to retain this building. We don't have a lot of our, our, our old buildings around. And this is very important because of the, particularly as we're going through another pandemic, you know, the last time we had one over a hundred years ago, the, the man who owned and lived in this building was in charge of trying to help people who were suffering from the, uh, from the Spanish flu. And, and uh, they didn't have all the things, they didn't have the vaccines, they didn't have all the good stuff we have now. Um, and, um, so, and, and so that, that's kind of a, a mark in our uh, place in our history that uh, I don't think we should lose. If we can avoid it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker on this topic will be Don Seltzer. Thank you, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Um, I think that concept one is probably pretty close to what the ARB and the owner at the time had a vision for the property back in 2009 during the original hearings for the special permit. Um, I also wanna point out that with concept two, I don't see any way that you're going to meet the requirements for usable open space. You're gonna to have to just waive that requirement entirely if you want concept two. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to comment on this docket number? Okay, with that, we will close uh, public comments. And um, let's see, again, we're not going to, to vote on um, any of the particular um, plans that were presented with us this evening. I think that there has been um, some clear sentiment identified that uh, version two is preferred if the waiver is granted for the demolition delay by the historical commission, but if not, that uh, option one uh, would, would be preferred so that, again, something moves forward expeditiously on this site. Uh, what I would uh, present to the board is that um, I think that what we um, at this point, the next steps for this applicant would be to come back to us with a, pl with a plan and request a hearing for, with a new proposal. Um, and so that closing this open um, special permit, which we, which is really belongs to the, to the CVS um, at this time, uh, I would propose would, would make some sense and um, that we uh, ask the applicant to come back to us um, once they have direction from the historic commission with a proposal uh, that moves forward with the, um, with the appropriate scheme given, given some of the guidance we've given tonight. So I wanted to get some feeling from the board as to whether or not uh, you're comfortable with closing the current special permit that we uh, have left open to spur forward some movement on this property. And I'll start with uh, Ken for your sentiments. Yes, I'm fine with that. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Okay, Jean. Oh, you're on mute, Jean. 
I have a different thought about that. Please. I think, I mean, and the reason I have this different thought is that were it not for um, our reopening the special permit, I'm not sure we would have gotten this amount of movement, if any movement at all. I would prefer to keep it open, um, maybe schedule the next hearing in two months. If in two months, um, the applicant can come back with a new application, then we can close the um, current permit. But I'd prefer to keep it open until we get um, an application for a new permit for concept one or concept two or a concept yet to be determined. I, I appreciate that that sentiment. My um, own, my my question, my thoughts on that are that I even if once a scheme is identified, I think it's going to take the applicant longer than you know they they meet this coming month with historic. They're they're I, they identify whether or not they will waive the demolition delay for one of these two schemes. It's chosen. I think it's going to take longer than that amount of time for them to come back with the application for um, for a special permit. So um, to your point, I wonder if we perhaps keep it open another month to have the applicant come back following the hearing, the, the ruling from the Historic Commission and identify to your point, what we've been looking for is a timeline, right? So what is the timeline then? Which has been chosen? What is your timeline for the application? And then perhaps close it at that time? Would that be? I think that's okay. Can we get Mr. Uh, Attorney Nessie whether a month is an appropriate time for that? Well, Gene, can I, can I say one thing before? Is that Please. okay, Rachel? Please. Um, I think if you're looking for a stick, Gene, we can always reopen it. So why don't we just close it right now and let the process go through? If the process doesn't go through, we just reopen it. That's our that's our prerogative. That's true too. I think it's just easier to keep it open and to just set the other date now. And that's why I'm curious as to what would be from Attorney Anessi's perspective, a time when he can come back and report on you know, what the um, Historical Commission did or was going to do and when they can come in with a proposal. So which you may just be open one more time. So Attorney Anessi, would you uh, be able to comment on your thoughts on, on timing given uh, what we just identified as our well, yeah, preferred? I, I, I certainly am going to need time to come back with a plan that we can talk about uh, from the point of view of uh, having a, a full-blown hearing. Uh, the, I don't see any reason why it could not be closed out. Uh, there is no statute of limitations on the part of the ARB saying to my client, okay, we're gonna reopen it again at this point. Uh, you give me one less thing to worry about and to think about at that point. I've got enough on my plate dealing with this right now. I've got the ARB, I've got the Historical Commission, and I'd like to try to make that happen if I could. And quite frankly, it would make my life easier if this, uh, if this, uh, the CVS hearing was in fact closed out. You're not giving away anything. You're not giving away the store. Uh, you're simply shutting it down. You can reopen it again if you have to. I would prefer that. Uh, I will defer to the members of the board as to what they want me to do. Um, essentially, in this particular situation, I'm at your mercy, okay, because of the history of this. So um, you tell me what you want me to do. So, Gene, I have a question for you. Um, would, following the uh, hearing with the Historical Commission, if uh, Attorney Anessi was to provide a memo with the outline of the findings of that commission and the intent of the um, his client in terms of 
moving forward and you know at that point what the timeline for an application for a special permit of its own right uh, for this project because at some point they need to you know open a, a special permit to to do whatever they're going to do on that site whether it's scheme one or scheme two would that be um, an appropriate ask as a as a next step if we closed the the permit would you be satisfied with that Well, I prefer it the other way, but if you and Ken and Steve would prefer to close this out and just ask uh, a, a attorney and ask you to do that, I can live with that. Okay, thank you. Steve, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think the, the big question is, um, what form of direction the historical commission decides to give. Um, I, I think that'll really set the tone for what happens next. Um, I do like the idea of, I, I am in agreement with Gene that I, you know, I would like to at least have a sense of a timeline um, once, um, you know, the historical historical commission has weighed in. So perhaps we could propose that we keep the special permit open for one additional month. Uh, they, the, I believe that the next meeting is November 2nd, if I'm not mistaken, Jenny, for the historical commission. And our- November 2nd, yes. Great, and our meeting, uh, our second meeting, we have a meeting next week, which obviously is the day before the historical commission meets and our meeting after that is what is that november 15th yeah. uh attorney and Essie, would november 15th give you enough time to react to the historical commission and come back to us with again not a plan obviously there is a, a whole separate special permit that would need to be applied for before we actually review any any plans in detail, but a a schedule of of next steps and um, a direction, or would you prefer to move that to the the first week in the first meeting in December? Jeffrey, you're on board here. Uh, what's your what are your thoughts? You're the owner. Yeah, no, we're we are on board with trying to get something done. We've been trying to do this all along. All right, um, all right. The, the uh, demolition application has one last signature, which will be acquired tomorrow. All right, we're not talking about the demo app right now, okay? Uh, we're talking about coming back before the ARB following the meeting with the Historical Commission for the purpose of giving them a reaction. Uh, and it's being suggested that we come back on November 15. Does that give us enough time for you, Monty, and I to talk about it after historical tells us what their point of view is to get our thoughts together and come back to the ARB on November 15? That's the only issue right now. Uh, again, uh, maybe it makes more sense to give a little more time. Um, it seems like all of this has been taking more time. Right. Maybe it's just fair just to put it in now. All right, what's the next hearing, Jenny, after November 15th? It's December 6th. December 6th? All right, can we have December 6th? Yes. Okay, so- um, Mark, are you okay with that? You may be uh, yes, I mean, we're not really producing anything. It's merely kind of re-presenting and discussions and things but like I that. But I wanna so. discuss it with you, Monte, yeah. in any event, okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Great. All right. And it's then again, to be clear, we won't be reviewing in, in detail any, any plans because those right. will need to be right. presented in a uh, separate special permit application. Um, but at this point, I would um, see if there is a, a motion to continue the special permit one more meeting to uh, December 6th, um, at which time uh, the applicant or the um, the team, the ownership team will identify for us the uh, 
the, the plan for going forward following the historical commission meeting on November 2nd. Yes, agreed. Okay, so is there a, a motion? So move, G, uh, a second? Ken or Steve? I will second. Okay. We'll take a vote for approval. Uh, Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. All right. So this will be continued until uh, December 6th. We will see you back at that time. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. So with that, that closes our uh, public hearings for this evening. And we will now move on to agenda item number two, which uh, is the meeting minutes. I believe we have one set of meeting minutes from September 27th, 2021. Um, as Jenny pulls those up, I will start with Jean to see if you have any uh, corrections or additions. I, I do, and I, I'm looking at my copy and not at the screen, so. That's me, fine. Let me get back to my copy. Um, one second. Here we go. Okay, on the first page, third paragraph, where it says, Mr. Murphy said the former Papa Gino's would be reconfigured, it should say that the rear of the former Papa Gino's space. Um, then the, the two paragraphs later where it says the chair asked about the existing tenant structure and Mr. Murphy said all the current tenants would be staying and the existing commercial space is not changing. I don't think he said that. I think he said most of the current tenants would be staying and, but also some of the existing commercial space is changing. So I'm not sure where that came from but um, it's not exactly what um, he had said. Well, he might've said all the existing current tenants would be staying, but not all the existing commercial space is not changing. Those are obviously making some changes to the commercial space. So maybe just say, and um, some of the commercial space is changing. Are you ready to go to the next page? Okay, great. Next page, um, first paragraph on the top. Um, after the sentence that says, ends with uncovered bike parking. There should be another sentence that says the applicant had not provided a TDM plan. Should we go on? Continue. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. I realized I was muted. Okay, um, let me get back to my copy of the minutes. On page four, um, where the it's like the third paragraph down, which says Mr. Benson reviewed. And the second line says for its use, which precludes expansion, it's not what it was. Use which allowed for expanding the building in the rear.
Do you get that? Yes. Okay. Um, sorry, I have to switch back and forth here. Um, then the next paragraph down, um, the second sentence that said, Mr. Benson said he would like to have a conversation with, with, Ray, with Ms. Ray to discuss what the board's options are, including potentially amending the special permit. And that sentence should continue to say, and to continue rather than close the hearing. Those are my suggested edits. Great, thank you, Jean. Kim, any uh, adjustments? You're on mute, sorry. Nope, you're good? Okay. Fabulous. Thumbs up will do. Steve, any uh, any corrections or additions? Uh, yes. On uh, in the first paragraph of page three. Yes, that's a paragraph. Uh, so three lines from the end. There is a sentence that reads, Mr. Revelak said the lack of usable open space is representative of other B3 parcels in town. And we will run in and yet yeah, before will it should say we will run into this issue again um i'd like to add uh, two sentences after um you know after again um the first is for this project he believes that the creation of usable open space would require semi or uh, actually would, would require removal of part removing part of the historic building on Medford Street comma eliminating a portion of the building frontage on Mass Ave or eliminating most or all of the off street parking on the rear of the parcel. None of these options seems particularly feasible. That's it. You did say those things too. Well, I I, I wanted to include the reason, the thought process. Okay. That's all. Thank you. All right, and I don't have any further uh, additions. So do we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from uh, September 27, 2021 as uh, amended? So moved. Second. We can roll call vote. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. The meeting minutes are approved as amended. Uh, let's see, that concludes agenda item number two and uh, moves us to agenda item number three, which is open forum. Uh, so any uh, members of the public who are still with us this evening who wish to speak, uh, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of the screen. Give another couple seconds. All right, seeing no speakers, I will close uh, open forum. And I believe that that concludes our agenda this evening. So we will uh, take a motion to adjourn. Madam Chair. Oh, please, Steve, go ahead. Uh, I motion that this meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board be adjourned. Second. Second. Great, thank you. Take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening and we will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good you. night. Good night.